thank you so much. Oh, first of all, thank you all so, so much for coming out. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Yes, okay, awesome. Seriously, like I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I didn't promote this as much as I should have, as a good community manager should, so I thank you all so much for taking the time, and hopefully you learn a thing or two. Um, I am very big on feedback. At the end, there'll be a QR code, a couple of resources that I talked about previously. Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about how this talk went. If you have any ideas or any suggestions, I'm always open to them. But, um, but yeah, I'm Francisco Cruz Mendoza, and I'm here to talk about preserving community authenticity while proving its impact. Uh, a lot of fancy words in there, uh, but you know, we'll go over kind of what I mean around that. I think all of us here in the community industry kind of have a feel for this and know what I'm like going with. Um, so yeah, so I'm Francisco Cruz Mendoza. I have, uh, you know, I've been in community for over a decade. I started off at a company called Startup Grind, uh, where I helped scale the community with Derek in a little garage in Palo Alto, and then helped create kind of some of the software that then spun out to be Bevy. Has anyone heard of Startup Grind or Bevy in the past? Okay, awesome, awesome, I'm amongst friends here. So um, I've been you know, doing community for quite some time now um, and learned a lot along the way. So um, before I jump into like, you know, some of the lessons learned or things that we've kind of wanted to share with you around Notion, I want to talk a little bit about the programs that we're actually running there. So the number one is the ambassador community. And ambassadors are really just like volunteer enthusiasts that are teaching um, how to use Notion around the world. These are templates, these are courses, uh, YouTube videos, um, online, in-person events, and so, so, so much more. Um, really, really kind of like our first core community and really the folks that kind of set the example for what we're doing today. Um, the next is the champions community. And these are internal champions working at like larger team organizations or enterprise. Um, level companies, and they're responsible for bringing Notion into the company, helping teach it internally, kind of like showcasing to their team members like how to use Notion the best way possible, and also scaling it. Um, and again, some of the most like amazing, amazing members. A lot of them started out personal. I've heard a lot of stories about people who are like, I chose the company I work at today because they were using Notion instead of something else. Uh, and of course, Campus Leaders, our latest program um, run by Emma Yik, and it's full of just amazing university students all around the world, representing hundreds of campuses and over 10,000, or you know, tens of thousands of members um, impacted. They're mostly running in-person events, teaching folks how to use Notion, um, kind of from a productivity standpoint, as a student, right? How are you summarizing AI notes? How are you summarizing um, you know, the various lessons that you're learning in school every day? Um, and yeah, so diving into community of authenticity, um, I kind of want to talk a little bit about um, the Notion community itself. I get a lot of questions all the time about like, oh, how did you like, how are you supporting such an amazing community? Like, how are you working with such like um, friendly folks? And um, there's like a lot of lessons to be learned there, but like, most of it really was kind of already naturally happening. Um, one of the things I feel like there's a lot of folks that really kind of help community get to where it is today at Notion. But Ivan Zhao, our founder, really had played a core, core part in this. Early on, he was one of the people that was always kind of checking out user feedback, submissions, um, feature requests, like any tickets that were coming in, especially in the early days, he was going through a lot of them. Um, and he was like collecting information on what he was learning from folks and really trying to implement that within the product. And a lot of the features, a lot of the amazing kind of things that you see in Notion today were from those very, very early messages that they were getting. Um, this is much later down the road, but again, he was just always there for the community. He's always been bought in. Like whenever he's traveling, he's like, hey, I'll be in town. Is anyone around? And like people will get together. This is 2019, pre-pandemic days. Just people sat in a circle and he was just down to like hear what people were up to. Um, which leads us into our first community program. So when I talk about community authenticity, again, people a lot of times come to me and it's like, here is the community I want for my company, or this is what leadership wants. And we want to grab these users, put them into this box, and kind of like build the community from there. We really kind of just met people where they already were at. So for us, it really became more of a goal of like, how do we support people where they're already kind of like, uh, you know, achieving it. So. Uh, Early on, the team noticed that there was people creating communities and like websites around how to share Notion, how they're using it, tips and tricks, and people were just excited to like geek out over it. Really, it was just like those early geeks, kind of like the, the maker movement, very similar with productivity folks um, on the Notion side. And one of them was Ben Lang. Ben Lang had created a website that kind of curated templates from all around the world, and the team took notice and like, hey, why don't you come on, brought him on as a contractor, and he built out uh, the Notion Pro community, which then became Notion Ambassadors. And all it really was, was creating resources and support to help the community with what they were already doing. 
these were just like docs on how to run your own communities. These were like, you know, sending out goodies to events that people were already hosting and really just kind of like getting some sneak peeks and early access to like where Notion was going next so that they would be able to kind of share it with their wider communities that they were already running. Um, one thing I really want to kind of emphasize here is I truly believe we have one of the kindest communities on the web. I'm very fortunate. I know there's a lot of other communities out there sometimes they are, you know, a little rough around the edges. Like I'm a big gamer, you know, and Call of Duty can be a very interesting place at times. So, you know, luckily I'm not having to deal with that. But I think that's a core lesson. Derek Anderson always said the first 10 people you bring onto your community are some of the most important folks you'll ever kind of interact with because they will help shape and mold what the future looks like. And a lot of these first 10 folks are still in the community today, and they continue to kind of help support the community, shape it, even you know, 350 plus beyond. So I think that's like one of the more, like, more important kind of core lessons that um, have really kind of like shown the importance of those early members and making sure you're getting the right people. Um, and kind of meeting people where they're at, not forcing folks into a box has really led to some amazing results. Um, first things first, uh, Hey Bomb and Sejin out of Korea. We have a Korea Facebook group with 40,000 members. It really just began, again, as just a community where people were kind of trading notes, showcasing what they were up to, but then it became something much more than that. Um, even though Notion wasn't in Korean, they were translating like support documents, they were translating the website on their own and kind of creating little like Notion websites that were kind of like, you know, a copy of what we already had. And again, we were just there to support them along the way. What was really incredible was later on when we did localize in Korea, we didn't have an office in the area. They were almost kind of like, you know, unofficial spokespeople for us. They hosted events, had thousands of members online and really self-organized just because they were so excited to be part of the community, to be part of Notion and really just share what they were learning along the way. And today we have a growing office in Seoul, Korea. Um, the Reddit subscribe, uh, the R Notion, Reddit group, another amazing example. We have over 300,000 members. This is run by Ben Smith and Alex, who are also ambassadors. And again, they just wanted to create a community where they can kind of reach out to other Reddit users. Who here has ever looked up like, hey, like, what is the best restaurant in San Francisco? Reddit. Okay, yeah, so a lot of us, you know, we trust that like personal experience, real people sharing, you know, what they're doing online and like how they're learning along the way. And that's what they wanted. They wanted an authentic place where they could do that. So um, it's been absolutely like incredible growth to kind of see where it's going. Something that's really interesting again about Notion is we have over a hundred of these groups around the world, but Notion does not own or moderate any of them. We just support the ambassadors that are doing this already. So again, meeting the community where it's already at, meeting them at what they're already doing and really just kind of supporting along the way. Um, and this includes businesses. Um, this kind of came as a bit of a surprise. You know, people were just like, hey, like I am helping others how to use Notion and like maybe there's a business case here. And sure enough, there was. There's a lot of um, consultants around the world that are essentially helping onboard not just personal users to anywhere from like, you know, managing their families to like how to study better to up to like enterprise users and companies up to 300 people. and like onboarding them on a notion, teaching them how to effectively use it and scale it internally. Um, and you know, again, we met them there. We created a certification program to certify them, gave them a badge so folks knew that they were you know, legit, let's just say, and um, really kind of created a directory to kind of like um, share where you could find these folks. Um, some, sometimes meeting your community, you know, where they're already at is tough. Uh, I don't know if anyone remembers TikTok in like the 2019, 2020 era. It was more like a dancing, like cool, like, you know, do a little jig thing. Um, and we just noticed that they were, you know, spending a lot of time there. Notion was trending very highly there. They were creating templates, sharing things, like creating these aesthetic like templates and like uh, really like home pages that people really love and enjoy. They were going viral on their own. So we, you know, we we kind of like figured out how to reach out to them. A team led by uh, Lexi uh, Barnhorn and Alex Howe did some amazing efforts. I don't know if you've seen our Notion TikTok, but it's a little bit different than our most our, of our brands how we represent each other. But it's led to a billion views on Notion. The hashtag Notion community on TikTok is absolutely massive and just continues to grow. So this is just like a little bit on the authenticity side. Many folks that are already at, supporting them in the efforts that they're already kind of a part of, and like how can you further just help them get to where they want to go? Um, which leads us into some more core examples about kind of 
proving the value, right? We all have communities here, and we all know these amazing stories, these amazing examples of what they're doing for our product, what they're doing for our users, what they're doing for just, you know, our organizations. But how do we kind of prove that or share that with some of our, like, you know, larger stakeholders or staff or, you know, just leadership? Um, one of the core pillars of Notion is feedback is a gift. We truly believe that feedback is a gift. This goes all the way back to Ivan in the early days, kind of going through all those tickets, figuring out what was going on, where can he support. Um, and we've continued to kind of have that spirit within our company today. Um, look, I create really cool swag. I think it's cool swag uh, for, that's exclusive to our ambassadors and our community. I like set up these cool AMAs with Ivan and our engineers and um, like, you know, set up these cool special shout outs on social media, whatever I can to like get people excited but it, nothing is as cool as getting early access into our beta programs, right? Making them feel special, making them feel like they're a part of the company, even though maybe it's kind of like an external, in an external way, they still feel like they're owners of what we're producing and what's coming out. Um, here's an example of beta testing for an early AI feature that uh, has been released since then, but folks were incredibly excited. And when we have these opportunities out, they're always just thrilled to kind of submit feedback. Let us know what's working, let us know what's not. And when you're at a company, like we, we understand the product very, very well, but there's all these you know, use cases that you just can't really fathom, right? Like they're constantly finding new ways to kind of like stretch the limits of what's possible and where it can go. But along the way, they submit this feedback that it just allow for much better launches and kind of that you know, polish that we're known for over at Notion. Um, but we try really hard to make sure they feel heard and like we show them that like really it's a part of what we do. Um, here we have Ben Borowski who I'll be talking about a lot, uh, one of our core core um, users on the ambassador side who was like super excited about a uh, feature that was rolled out finally that he had submitted a lot of like feedback on and he was super excited about. And then we have uh, Dave out of Miami who is a Notion teacher, literally he is a teacher that teaches other teachers how to use Notion and also consults with businesses. And he's like, I don't know, but I just happened to be on a trip to New York City. Francisco invited us to the office. We cornered the CTO and we gave him that feedback. I'm not saying that that's why the feature was released and I can't confirm nor deny, but I can tell you that feedback that we've gotten over the you know, months and weeks leading up to a launch definitely is why we have the features that we have today. And they clearly shape the product. So the engineering teams are beginning to like really understand this. They've always had, but now it's like they want to get more involved, which is really, really exciting. Um, and I'll go back in a little bit more about that later. But another large piece of this is um, customer support. I think customer support can truly make or break any experience for our users in like what sticks and what doesn't. Um, and it's not an easy task. Um, but our community has helped us in so many different ways. I talked already about how they're translating documentation before we're even in those languages officially, you know, sharing kind of within their niches and everything else in between. Like, there's so many examples of how our community really kind of stretches what our support is able to do. Um, one of the biggest examples is within the Champions community. So again, Champions community are like Notion power users that bring Notion into a, a large team or enterprise, um, but also kind of help scale it internally. We, we launched a Slack community, and when leadership asked, like, hey, what if, since we like, are not going to have a support team dedicated to this channel, what if we create a community help channel where members will help each other answer each other's questions without having an official Notion represent, like, representative there? I, you know, I was optimistic about the idea. I just didn't know how it was going to land. And sure enough, it is by far the most popular channel. We have multiple replies, multiple threads going on all the time where people are just helping each other. But what was magical about it is they're all looking at it from the same lens. They're all enterprise users, they're all team users. You can't really find the answers on Reddit. You can't post certain questions, right, about your company or IP. But amongst other champions, you feel a lot more comfortable sharing that kind of information and getting answers that otherwise would be really tough to get. So it just shows like how much folks are willing to help one another out and really stretch the capacity of support. Support is constantly looking at this and just like very thankful for these kind of initiatives. And that we're now investing a little bit more within these channels and having some more representation from Notion internally that kind of support these folks as well. Um, and it really leads to some magical moments. So we talk a lot about support, but also user education. This is like a really, really special moment, at least to me. This happened about uh, two or three weeks ago. And essentially, we had a very big launch around formulas. I don't know if anyone's a big formula person, maybe sort of. Tiago's here, so I know he is. So, uh, but like, you know, we had a big launch. We kind of changed how we use formulas. And it really kind of fundamentally changed a lot of the equations that go into it. 
So we had uh, Marie Pullen and Ben Borowski who run Notion Mastery, what is by far one of the most popular courses and communities um, on the internet around Notion today. Basically partner up with two of our engineers and not only one, go over all the changes that were happening in features. And these are trusted members of like the user groups you know, across the web. So they were very excited to kind of tune in, but also they got a sneak peek into how it came to be. Right? So now we see this partnership of our community, our engineers, and support kind of coming together. And not only supporting users, but also teaching them the latest and greatest of what's going on. Um, the final kind of like topic I'll go into is raising awareness. Um, you know, when it comes to marketing teams in general, like the different things that folks are always jumping into, like I'm always impressed by the team here at Notion and what they're doing. I think they're some of the sharpest and brightest people out there. And then I'm always in awe of the different initiatives that they're up to. Um, and this can be like language pop-ups around the world where we're kind of like popping up in a new location, sharing what Notion is, bringing awareness to it, and having like experiences around it uh, to like different ad campaigns. I don't know, last year we had a very big ad campaign around different cities around the world and really kind of brought a lot of awareness to what Notion is and was. Um, and then especially like when it comes to uh, online moments, we're always trying to like kind of create those special online moments. But what really kind of pushes us over into like this special territory is our community. They just take it that extra mile that really makes it feel special and authentic. Um, I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna focus just on in-person events for now. It's kind of something that again, from the very early days, something that uh, our community was always interested in. We're always trying to find new ways to support them. We recently launched a grant program, um, probably late last year, or almost a year in for it, just because coming out of the pandemic, it was tough to have in-person events. Legal and HR were not the most exciting, you know, about uh, having these sort of things happen. But finally, we're over that hump, and it's led to some amazing results. Uh, you know, we had uh, uh, Dave out in Miami, along with Ernesto, basically host an event, the very first one in Miami, where it was kind of like a combination of everybody, where we had a campus leader present in the beginning about how they use Notion within their university studies, how they're using it you know, with AI, summarizing their notes and everything else in between. And then we had uh, Ernesto, who was a consultant, talk about how he kind of teaches Notion to everybody, like some of the early steps, some of like maybe the things where people get stuck on and how to overcome them. And we just happened to have two of our champions from Brazil that were in Miami that week. They're like, hey, we're gonna be, like, we'd love to come to this event. I know it's sold out, can we come? We're like, how about you present? And they presented about using Notion internally at a large company. So then we have this like personal experience, this word of mouth, almost that Reddit experience in person, right? You're hearing from real people how they solve real problems using Notion. It's like, you can't like, I feel it's very hard to like have a video explain that or have, you know, share that experience. Um, we also, uh, so again, as like we do more of these, the internal team is like so bought in, right? More and more people want to be a part of this. Uh, uh, we had Akshay uh, go out to India to visit family recently. And uh, he's like, hey, I'm just gonna be in town. Like, if you wanna do an event, like, let me know, I'm up for it. And it was like, we had like a month heads up. So I reached out to the ambassador community. Does anyone wanna do an event? We were expecting 30, 20, 30 people, coffee shop, something light. Um, and Parvathron, who was um, out of India, basically just went and ran with it. Over two weeks, he put everything together. He's like, this is such a cool, monumental moment. We'd love to have host them. And ran all the logistics. We had over 350 people show up to learn from Akshay. But more importantly, also learned from our campus leader who talked about how he was selling templates while going to school and was basically helping support his family and like they're going on one of their first vacations ever. So it's like these amazing moments where people get to learn about you know, Notion, how it's being used, but also the local office saw uh, you know, applications come in about like working and being more interested in like contributing to the Notion goal and Notion vision. We saw a lot more ambassador applications coming in from India and just, again, it just brought all this like energy in the area. The last one is uh, Johnny out of UC Berkeley uh, for the Campus Leaders Program is always up to some amazing stuff. And he set up an event called like, I think it's like Boba in Notion or like Notion Boba, something. Anyway, you got free Boba, you got to learn about Notion and you got stickers you know, along the way. 500 people showed up throughout the day. Like those are like, you know, like most companies that have an like experiential pop-up, like that's a good day, right? And you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I think it was like, you know, uh, we basically give them a budget, we send them out like a bunch of goodies, stickers and everything else, and it created an amazing experience. There's now multiple campus leaders at UC Berkeley that are helping teach Notion and creating more and more experiences. Um, so what does this all actually mean though? Like, okay, Francisco, we all feel good, right? We're all excited about the community and where we're going with it, but what does this actually mean? Uh, recently, uh, some of the folks over on the growth team reached out and they're like, Francisco, Emma, I'm seeing a blip in traffic in Brazil. Did y'all do anything out there? 
It's like, yes, we did. Early in the summer, we had a language pop-up. And we basically went in, had a little like a cafe where people could kind of learn more about Notion, grab something to eat, hang out, kind of co-work and study in a small venue. Um, you know, which was great. And it was an amazing experience. You know, uh, thousands of people came through. But what was really special was after we left, we saw an influx in ambassador applications. Folks who wanted to kind of do more of this on their own. And they continued to have events throughout the summer. And it wasn't actually like it was that initial pop-up that really kind of kicked off the movement. But it was individual ambassadors hosting their own events that really made it special and like blipped up on our growth team's radar. So it's you know things like this that you really need to kind of like capture and like kind of capture that energy and momentum and then essentially like learn how to replicate for future events um, as well and just get those early metrics and early tracking down. So just a quick recap here. Um, number one is showcase how your community is shaping your product. We all have those special like moments and stories about what our community is doing and just like things that tug at your heart and just everything else in between, right? Make it a habit to showcase those and showcase how they're shaping your product, right? For us, it was those early beta testers that kind of shaped those features that then became beloved on the internet and got a lot of attention. Like showcase that. Those tweets were something that internally were like people were stoked to see. The second thing is report on like company goals further supported by your community. We were talking about support, right? How our community kind of extends the support wing and just allow us to kind of support in ways that honestly we can't do it, right? Like the notion for ADHD users, uh, Facebook group, like we can't, you know, we don't have, you know, uh, samples for that or a doc for that, right? That's something that only the community can kind of provide. And number three is like track those early metrics and prove the impact of your community initiatives. And like for us, it was a bit of a surprise, right? A growth, some of the growth team reached out to us and like, hey, what's going on in Brazil? And then like. Once we kind of got that up and going, we were able to kind of replicate those, those metrics tracking and supply to different events and different initiatives around the world. So these are very early basic kind of um, ways to start beginning to think about how you prove kind of that value, but still keep the community authentic. I've, again, I've heard a lot of times where it's like, you know, you understand your community, but leadership wants just to be metrics driven. I think there's a balance between the two. We can kind of share both. So, Thank you all so, so much for coming. I sincerely appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, I have a QR code here. Um, so I promise goodies. So if you sign up for this, I, again, feedback as a gift. I'd love to hear your thoughts about my talk. Um, please provide some feedback. Let me know how I did, like what kind of things you'd like to learn in the future. Um, if I come back, I'd love to do a much deeper dive into the raw metrics and kind of tools that we're using to really uh, showcase what the community is up to. But also, like goodies, uh, if you sign up for this, I'll send you some goodies, some Notion swag if you're a fan. And we're also hiring. We're looking for a community operations manager at Notion, um, someone that has a lot of automation experience using uh, various automation tools. So if you're interested or know someone that might be, please let me know. And uh, again, thank you so, so much. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Are you open to a few questions? OK, we're very lucky. We do have a couple minutes for a few questions. I know there's many people in here. Yeah, we have one right here. Hey, Francesco, great talk. Oh, thank you so much. Um, quick question. Two, actually, two of them. Yep. One, what department does you roll up to at Notion? And then what percentage of that department's budget is devoted to community? Ah, uh, gotcha. Oh, man. I, I wish I could answer that question. I can answer the first question, which is, uh, you know, we're on the marketing team. So we're concerned on the marketing. We have jumped around a few different times. I think a lot of us here know that feeling where it's like, are you brand? Are you marketing? So we're, we're under marketing. Um, but, um, but afterwards, we can talk a little bit more about specifics. Well, I, guess, I guess the percentage, I'm assuming everybody ever kind of wants to do this, because like, everybody's so hot and management teams are doing so planning right now. Mm -hmm. And so like, I did it roughly outside, so it's somewhere between 8 to 12%. And what's the people who are like, oh, understood. But like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I honestly don't have that metric on me at the moment. I'm so sorry. I can give you some examples and kind of different ways that we're spending budget. I will say that we run very lean. For the amount of impact that we're having, we're one of the leanest team across the marketing org. Um, and that's something that uh, the team is very, very happy about and something that, I don't know, I'm very much like I was uh, early entrepreneur roots, so I'm always like very proud to be scrappy as we can. So, but yeah. 
Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Any other questions? I see one over here. Beautiful. Thank you. So I was very eager to ask you a question. Sure. Um, I, there's a lot of engagement that is taking place with everything that you're doing. And how do you track that back to revenue? Um, because showing the impact and the value is is easy in terms of community impact, but how do you bring it back to revenue goals? Yeah, um, I'll do one specific example, um, and that's support. Erica Cool did an amazing talk a few years ago where basically at Salesforce, they calculated how much, essentially roughly how much each question that lands in a support community supports queue is. How much does that cost the company in terms of time, resources, what have you? And then basically you know, went through their communities and scraped how many questions were asked and then answered. You know? And that's like one of the like, simplest, rough metrics that you can basically showcase uh, internally within your company. And that's something that those are kind of some of the things that we're trying to do, where it's like, OK, how many questions are being answered in the champions community where they're answering stuff for each other? And how much is this kind of alleviating customer support and customer success? So those are some of the things that we're thinking about internally currently, and those do impact overall revenue um, at Notion. Um, my question is, with you guys being like a lean team, um, a lot of us probably have this ex um, experience. It's like, how do you then get buy-in, especially when you guys were a little much smaller on community initiatives? Like, how did you, what did you do to, to really sell that, the importance of it yeah. and get the budget to enact on those initiatives? Yeah, so uh, this is, I, I don't want to be fake here. I'm so sorry. Uh, so I will be on, the real answer is, uh, I'll give you the real answer. The real answer is like, Ivan has always been invested. Our leadership has always been invested in community. They saw the value very early on and how it impacted how people were organizing themselves, sharing online, and really, I think, shaping the, the product itself. They were noticing that this feedback that was being submitted was leading to a better product. So they've always been invested. But I'll say like events. Like, you know, it's, it's pretty easy. I think like for us, for in-person events, I'll use that as an example, it's, you know, we're spending like $500. The, the, the Boba one, I don't know if I can say it. Anyway, wait, wait, it's too late, <laughs> right? The Boba event was like 500, 600 bucks, right? We had 500 people show up. I know other marketing teams that are creating these wild experiential campaigns, spending $225,000 to go sit in a corner in New York City, and they might get 500 people. So like those are the kind of things where like, the marketing team's like, whoa, 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 we're spending how much over here, but we're spending how much over there? We have all these kids and like, you know, people are hitting up the founders, like, you know, and like people have kids going to school and they're all reaching out, they're like, oh my gosh, like I just did this notion thing. Your company's kind of cool actually. And like those are the kind of stories that really kind of resonate with my own leadership. But what I really will say, like, kind of like that, that one point I went to was um, showcasing. Really showcase. Like, like what's going on in your community. We all know these powerful stories. We all know what's going on. A lot of times there's a lot of stuff going on internally at your company. So make it an effort to always be showcasing these amazing, amazing stories. People will buy in. The, the other story or like the other example where, um, let's see here, Akshay basically went to one of our events. I probably skipped it. I am so sorry. Anyways, Akshay, one of our CEOs went to our event because he kept hearing about these amazing experiences people were having. Right? We had 350 people show up for that. And that was because we were showcasing these other events where people were kind of like stopping by on the trip to Berlin and like 50 people showed up. So I think that's like a really, really big part. Sometimes we're not, I'm not the best at showcasing these things, but once they understand what's happening, they're gonna buy in. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.